So many leak code problems got six figures in coins. This is find the minimum and maximum number of nodes between critical points. All right. So this is a leak code medium. Uh, I've already quickly looked over the problem. It's uh, pretty obvious, right? Even in the, they formally state it that it's a, a, a link list problem. Um, there's really no other data structures or algorithms um, except like, you know, a simple traversal to uh, require to solve this problem. It's more so just, you know, testing if you understand what a linked list data structure is, how you would process it efficiently, and if you can write, you know, clean and concise code that uh, handles, you know, all the various edge cases that tend to uh, appear when you're dealing with linked list problems, right? Like, how do you deal with the last node? How do you know when to terminate your traversal? What do you do if there's less than the required number of nodes to process, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into the problem. So a critical point in a linked list, a critical point in a linked list is defined as either a local maximum or a local minimum. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, it doesn't really matter, but let's just write out. Well, it does matter, but it, it, you know, sometimes they use big phrases, but try to think about the big phrases in terms of their components. Not so much like, oh, what the hell does this mean? You know, it's not, it's not the most important thing. Don't overload yourself with information so just write stuff down so ugh. so a critical point is either a local maximum or a local minimum all right so what are local maximums and local minimums then right okay a node is a local maximum if its current node has a value strictly greater than the previous node and the next node so local maximum means like it's like a hill, right? Like a hill to the left of the hill, the height is less. And to the right of the hill, the height is less, right? My hands in my head right now, my head is a local maximum, right? Because this hand is lower than my head, which is higher than this hand. So it creates like a hill structure, okay? I guess kind of formally, we could say, well, for, formally, form, formally, so I'm having a stroke here, right? If this value is X, then, and for X to be a local maximum, right? All that means is the value to the left, Y is less than X, and the value to the right, Z, is less than X. So you could write that, you know, you could say X is greater than Y and X is greater than Z, right? So that would be a local maximum. Now, on the other hand, right, a local minimum would be kind of that flipped. A node is a local minimum if the current node has a value strictly smaller than the previous node or the next node, okay? So we'd say that a local minimum. Now, this kind of approach where I'm kind of like walking through exactly what things mean with pictures may or may not be useful within an interview, right? It depends on the length of the interview. If you look at this problem and you can pretty quickly assess like, okay, this is going to take 45 minutes. I can walk through these examples to try to really indicate to the interviewer that I understand the core concept of this problem. That might be good. But if you don't have sufficient time, don't waste time doing this. Just for the sake of, you know, the solution video, I'm going to go through this process, but it may not be um, useful because it might take up too much time in actual interview context, but don't worry about that. So a local minimum is, well, you know, we have Y that's greater than X and then we have X, then we have a Z that's greater than X. So formula that would mean that X is less than Y and X is less than Z, right? So for example, if we had four, eight, two, Right, this will be a local maximum because eight is greater than four and eight is greater than two. And if we had uh, seven, one, six, right, we'd have seven greater than one, one less than six. So it's like seven and then one and then six, right? Like a valley, so it's a local minimum versus four, eight, then two, four, eight, and two, right? We have like a mountain, so we have a, a, a peak. So we have valleys and we have peaks, local minimums, local maximums, okay. So these are both critical points, right? Whatever that means. So note that a node can only be a local maximum minimum if there exists both a previous and node and a next node, right? So I have to have something to the left and something to the right to compare to, right? In order for me to be a hill, I have to have something to my left that's shorter and I have to have something to my right that's shorter for me to be a mountain or whatever. Okay, so we're given a linked list head, right? So we're given a linked list where it starts at the head of the linked list, right? Whatever that 
link list is, right? A pointer to the head of the link list. Return an array of link to containing, 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 containing the min distance and the max distance, where the min distance is the minimum distance between any two distinct critical points and max distance is the maximum distance between any two distinct critical points. If there are fewer than two critical points, return negative one, negative one, right? So we're going to need two critical points in order to compare these two things, right? So we kind of we kind of have multiple parts to this this problem, right? I guess the first thing we're going to need to do is number one. What's the first thing we need to do? We need to find the critical points, right? Because there's two types of critical points, but it doesn't it doesn't say that like. We need to find the maximum distance between a maxima value and a minimum value or a maximum and a max and a minimum. And it just says find the distances between critical points. So we want to know where all the critical points are, right? So we want to know all the cases where there's a minima and we want to know all the cases where there's a maxima and somehow note that. So how would you do that within a linked list, right? Well, for this example, let's do uh, not example one because example one, there's nothing, right? Because you need at least... You need two critical points. You only have two nodes. There's not even one critical point because in order for it to be a critical point, you need a left neighbor and a right neighbor. Does this have a left neighbor? No, it has a right neighbor, but it doesn't have a left neighbor. This one has a left neighbor, yes, but it doesn't have a right neighbor. So, you know, you can't process it. So, let's look at example two, right? Example one isn't going to provide you with any real, you know, in, you know, revealing information about the nature of the solution. It's just going to give you like, it's just stating the fact that if you can't find critical points, you return negative one, negative one. Okay. But example two, on the other hand, should provide us with something because it's, you know, it's, it's more beefy, right? It has more information. Okay, so we have five, three, one, two, five. So five, three, one, two, five, one, two, one, two. And then we'll just call this an example. Five, three, one, two, five, one, two. Okay, so just by looking at this problem, right? You know, one of the hard things about data structures and algorithms leak code you know it's like when you eye it like the way that we solve it is as human beings homo sapiens right we kind of can look at it but we have to kind of derive what we're actually doing when we when we look at it to solve it and how that can be written programmatically right so when i look at this i can say okay well you know this is a local maximum right because five is greater than two and greater than one um this right here is a local minimum, right? Because one is less than five, less than two. Uh, Where's another one? This is a local minimum too, right? Because three, one is less than three, less than two. So there's three local, there's three critical points, right? Two local minimums, one local maximum. And uh, that's how we can find them. But we need to find these critical points. So how do you do that programmatically, right? Well, you're gonna to need to compare. There's three things you need to compare, right? You need there's three things you need in order to make this comparison, right? You need the center node that you're checking to see if it's a critical point. You need what's to its left and what's to its right, right? So this requires information about three nodes, right? But it's not just any three nodes. About three consecutive nodes right so when i solve this problem let's do object eraser so we can get rid of this stuff nice and easy peasy right what i can do is i can say well i'll look at this node and i'll call it the previous node i'll look at this node and call it the current node and i'll look at this node and call it the next node right and then i'll say well is this a critical point well in order for this to be a critical point is the value at the current node right is the current node so we have the maxima and the minimum right so for maxima i'd say well is the previous less than the current and the current is greater than the next right that would mean that it's a maxima node right so is the current greater than the previous is the current greater than the previous no so it's not a maxima even though the current is greater than the next right and we also say for a minima what would we check we check if the previous is greater than the current and the current is less than the next, right? So for this one, 
the previous is greater than the current, right? So it's like going up on the left, but the next isn't uh, less than the, I mean, but the next isn't greater than the current, so it's not a minima. So neither of these work, right? So that's how you would check the condition, but then how would you move through the system? Well, in the next iteration, we can say, okay, for the next iteration, we're gonna be here. This will end up being previous. This will be current and this will be next. So what I'm really trying to ask you here now is like, how are we gonna get from previous, current, next in this, like with these pointers into these pointers? Well, we know in the next one, right? We'll know that uh, previous is gonna be equal to what used to be current, right? Because previous equals current and current will be what used to be next. So current will be, and we'll do this all in one line. So what we'll do is we'll say, We'll do this all in one line. That way we don't have to do swaps, right? If you do everything in one line, you can set everything once. That's one of the beautiful things about Python, right? So we're going to update previous, current, and next, right? And we said that, okay, well, what is previous now was the last iteration's current, okay? What is current now was the last iteration's next. And what's next now is what? What's next is whatever's previous next next is right this is n dot next right because we're dealing with with a link list here right so the link list has a value which we'll do for the comparisons not the actual p less than c we'll do p dot value less than c dot val and c dot val greater than n dot val or p dot val greater than c dot val and or ugh, and c dot val less than n dot val right and then if we want to iterate through we do n dot next so that means that n is equal to n dot next Right, so this is how we handle the iteration. So we look at three values. We run this calculation to see if they're minimums or maximums. And then we can shift over by um, setting this previous current and next like this, right? What used to be current is now the previous, right? What used to be current is now the previous. What used to be next is now the current. And what's now next is what used to be next, next is next, right? And then we do this until when? Well, right. We have to start with current as the second value, right? And then we, we move over, we shift over, we shift over again, we shift over again. We're done here, right? So we're done while there's a next because at the last iteration, it'll look like this, right? Where, you know, next is pointing to nothing because this is, this is the, this one's next is nothing, right? Like a uh, link list, you know, most forms, it's gonna have a null next here, right? So when this next is nothing, we're done. So we'll do this until next is nothing. And when next is nothing, we won't be able to update. So and so that would be the right place. And also, you know, we can't compare these values. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because we need three values to, to find out if something's a critical point. So let's just work this code in and see if we can find all the critical points in this example, okay? And then maybe that, you know, it doesn't serve as a proof that this approach works, but if you have enough, experience with programming data structures and algorithms usually one or two simple examples will you know at least convince you partly that your code is working as intended okay so what we'll do is we'll say okay we have our previous our current and our next and what we'll say the previous in the very beginning is what the previous in the very beginning is the head Right, this is the head in the beginning, so the previous is the same as the head. The current is the head's next. And the next is the head's dot next dot next. Now, someone may hate this approach, but I, I don't care. It's fine. So head, the previous is head, the current is head dot next, the next is head dot next dot next, right? Previous is head, current is head dot next, next is head dot next dot next right and then you might say well how do we know we even have one node that you can reference head dot next how is this not going to error right because if there's nothing in there then you try to do head dot next you're going to do null dot next it's going to error right so but that's because the number of nodes in this list is from two to ten to the five okay so there's at least two right so since there's at least two there's there's definitely going to be a head right because there's the head there's the head dot next and the head dot next dot next if there's just two would be null so there's a reference for everything that I'm trying to get, right? There's a head and there's a head dot next, right? Cause there's one, there's two. So there's a head and there's another one. So there's the head dot next. So then there's a head dot next dot next, which could be null since there's at least two. So this, 
all that to say in a most verbose way is that, you know, we have a head, we'll have a head, we'll have a head.next, and then we'll have a head.next.next, okay? Now, while there's a next, right? While there's a last node to look at, um, because if there's null, then there's nothing to compare to on the right, okay? So while there's a next, we'll say, well, what does it mean in order for there to be a uh, critical point? Well, it's either this is the case or this is the case. So let's do the maxima case. So if the previous value is less than the current val and the current val is greater than the next val, that's a maxima, right? Or if the previous val is greater than the current val and the current val is less than the next val, let me make sure I did this right. So P val less than C val and C val greater than N. P val less than C val and C val greater than N val, okay. And the other one is P val greater than C val and C val less than N. P val greater than C val and C val less than N. Okay, so these are critical points then. And then what we'll do is we'll say, well, we'll print, just for testing purposes, we'll say c.val is a critical, oh, plus, did I can't, we'll just do whatever. So cval is a critical point, right? And then we'll update our values, right? So well, how do we update these values in place all at once? We say pcn equals cn and n.next, right? So the previous now, since we're moving to the right, is what used to be the current. The current now, since we're moving to the right, is what used to be the next. And the next now is what used to be the next is next. Okay. And then we'll just return zero, zero. And we'll do this example here because it's a little bit more involved. Okay. So when we run this, of course, you're going to be wrong because we haven't done the whole problem, but we're just seeing if we can find the critical points because that's essential to solving this, right? So this is saying one, five, and one are critical points, right? So this one's a critical point. This five is a critical point. This one's a critical point. That's good enough for me, right? Okay. So now that we found the critical points, well, what's the next step, right? We found the critical points, which is great, but this problem has another component, which is we want to find... The critical points that are the closest to one another right the minimum distance between two critical points and we want to find the critical points that are farthest away from each other right well so what we want to do now is we want to find maximum distance and minimum distance critical points okay so for the maximum distance critical point you know they're both different and they're both equally strange and considering how you find the solution but i think the maximum critical uh the maximum distance between two critical points um is the easiest to understand and why that is as well the maximum distance is going to be the one that's closest to the start and the one that's closest to the end, right? Those are the, the most, as far as ways they can get from each other, right? If we're thinking about like a line, right, intuitively, right, if we're stuck on a line and there's these two people, how can they get as far away from each other as possible? Well, if this person decides to go as far left as possible and this person decides to go as far right as possible, then they'll be the farthest away from each other, right? If we're stuck in this room where we can only go straight or backwards, right? If, if I want to get as far away from you, then we'll both decide, like, I'll go as far straight as possible and you go as far backwards as possible. That's just to say, left and right, you have two directions. I'll go as far left and you go as far right and that'll maximize the distance between us. So if we're dealing with critical points, right, we can say, well, the maximum distance one are the one, the one that's as far left and the one that's as far right. And since we start from the left, the one that's as far left is the first one that we find, right? And the one that is as far right is the last one that we find. And these have distance one, two, three, right? Three. So if we want to find the maximum distance one, we just log what's the first one we see and we log the last one we see and that'll make the maximum distance, right? Anything else that's close, anything else that's in between those would be closer, Right? And that's kind of an informal way of proving this to yourself. It's like, okay, how do we know that the one that's farthest to the left and the one that's farthest to the right are farthest apart? Well, if we pick any other one, they'll only be closer together. 
right? If I have A, B, and C, and I say, what if A and C, if it's A, then B, then C, right? A is far as left, B is in the middle, C is far as right. How could anything in between A and C be closer? Right, because if you pick anything that's B or D, well, then those things are closer together because they're in between A and C. If you pick up anything like B and C, well, B is in between A and C, so B and C are closer than A and C. So it's just to say, if you go from the left, the first thing you find is as far left as possible, and the last thing you find is as far right as possible, so that'll make the maximum distance, okay? So let's go ahead and work that into this problem, right? So we'll have a log for the first thing we found, and what we're trying to do is distance. So as we go through this, we should say what distance we are from the start, right? So when I go through this, I should say, okay, when I'm here, I'm zero distance away. Ugh. When I'm here, I'm zero distance away. When I'm here, I'm one distance away. When I'm here, I'm two, I'm three, I'm four, I'm five, I'm six, right? So that way I know, okay, this thing is at five. The last one's at five, the first one's at two, so their difference is three. So we should keep track of like, the distance that we've gone so far, right? And we'll just start that at one. And we'll keep track of the first thing we see. We'll start at zero, this distance, right? And we'll keep track of the last thing we see in its distance. And then we'll go through. So if we see a critical point, we'll say, well, if we haven't seen the first yet, so if first is zero, that means we haven't seen the first yet. So since we haven't seen anything yet, this is the first one we've seen. And since we're going from the left, this is the first the farthest thing to the left, right? So if, if we haven't seen first yet, then we'll set first to the distance. So the distance of the first one is this distance here, right? So we'll go through, we'll say zero, we'll see one, we'll see n here and we'll say, okay, at this point, right? Our first equals two. And every time you look at something, you'll basically say, well, Every time I look at something, that's the last thing I've seen, right? Up until the end. Um, and then every time we do this, we'll update distance by one, okay? So when I go through this, I say, oh, this is actually the last thing I've seen, right? And then I'll keep going. I'll process this one, then this one, then this one. And then I'll see this one. I'll say, actually, oh, wait, no. I'll look at this one. And I'll say, actually, no, this is the last thing I've seen. And then I'll look at this one and say, no, actually, this is the last thing I've seen. Then I'll look at this one and this one and this one. So you'll see if I just keep thinking the the most, the last thing I've seen as I go through, like the most current thing, if it's a critical point, if I keep doing that by the end, the last thing I see will be the last critical point, right? Because I'm going from left to right. So if I keep saying the most right thing I've seen so far is the last thing up until the end, the most right critical point is the last thing I've seen up until the end, then the last critical point, which is the most right critical point, will be uh, the value of last, right? So this will be last equals um, five here, okay? So then when you subtract these together, you get five minus two equals three. So then here what you do is you'd say, well, at the end we would turn negative one because we haven't found what the minimum value is yet, but we do the distance of last minus first, okay? Now, how do we find the closest thing to one another? So this is kind of also weird, um, but you know, what we need to do is, well, the closest thing is, well, what are the closest things in the system? The, the two that are closest are here and here, right? These are the two closest ones. They're one away from each other. But remember, before I set this to be the last one, right? When I was here, the last one was one before, right? So last is always set to the, the closest thing to the point that I'm at, right? The closest critical point to the point that I'm at, that's what last is, right? When I'm here, last is one. When I'm here, last is uh, one. When I'm here, last is five or four, the, the value here, right? Sorry. So when I'm here, last is two. When I'm here, last is two. When I'm here, last is four. So wherever I'm at, last is always the closest thing to me, right? So I, all I have to do is just continue. Every time I look at a new node, I say, is this distance closer than the previous thing that I think is the smallest distance, right? Because I always keep track of the closest thing to me. 
So maybe at one point, the closest thing to me is far away. But then when I continue to go through the linked list, there's two values that are closer to each other, right? At this point, the closest thing to me is first, is this value here, which is two away. But then when I go here, the closest thing to me is one away. So it's something that updates as you go through the system, right? So before I say this, well, I'll say the minimum distance is the minimum of whatever I think, because maybe before I found two values that are close together, right? Maybe there's two critical points that are right next to each other, and then there's a hundred values that aren't critical points, and then there's another critical point. Well, obviously, these two that are closer to together are the minimum distance versus these two that are way farther away from one another, right? So we'll keep track of a minimum distance too, right? And we'll set it to float infinity as a as an initial value. And we'll say last equals uh, min distance equals the minimum distance or, you know, the current distance minus whatever I think the last minimum distance is, right? Uh, the, uh, the, the value, the distance of the last value, right? And then at the end, we just return whatever we think the minimum distance is. And we can get rid of this. And this was just remnants from a debugging scenario. All right, cool. So this works, but of course it doesn't address the fact when there are, you know, if there's only two nodes, this isn't going to work, right? If there's only one critical point, right? There has to be at least two critical points, right? And in order for there to be, well, wait. So this needs to be float infinity too, right? Because you don't want this to say, if there's only one, then it'll update this. So, or we'll see. So we need to think about how, we're, what's the edge case? Well, if we never establish first, right? That means that there was no critical point, right? Because first only gets established to a value if there's a critical point, right? And there'll never be more than one critical point if last equals first, right? So basically what they're saying is if there if there's not first, right? If there's not a first, that means we never found a value. Or if first equals last, that means that the first critical point is the last critical point. The only way that could happen is if there's only one critical point, right? Because if there's more than one critical point, the first will be some critical point and then the last will be updated to some other critical point. But if first equals last, that means that there's only one critical point. The first from the left and the first from the right are the same. They're the same freaking value, right? So if they're equal, we return a one a one. So maybe then we don't need. Actually, it's fine that last is zero here. All right. We could have done we could have done this, you know, case multiple ways, right? We could also say if the minimum distance is infinity or something like that, then we'd have to update these values, right? There's there's many ways to get to the solution. Ah! Oh no, because they would still think a. I'm failing you guys. I had I had I had a suspicion, right? That was what was going on here, but I didn't. Okay, cool. So what's the run in space? Right, because if min dist if, if last was zero, then it's gonna think that there's a critical point at zero to compare to. So then when you run this calculation, it's gonna think, oh, there's a last value of zero that I can compare the current distance to, which isn't the case, right? There is no value at zero. There is no critical point at zero. So with that said, what's the run, what's the space? And I could shorten this considerably, right? I could put all this on one line. I could put this on one line. Uh, I could put all this on one line. You know, there's there's ways to make this ugly. Uh, more pretty, I guess, but uglier in terms of your ability to understand it. So we're not gonna do that. So let's do, uh, let's say N is the length of the linked list, right? And then we'll say for time, well, you know, these are all constant operations. We just have to look at every single node to determine if it's a critical point. And then for every N node, we just ensure that, you know, we do a critical, uh, a critical, we do a constant operation to find if it's a critical point. Then we update some pointers in the distance from the start. So that's for N nodes, we do something constant. So we do N constant things. This is constant. This is constant. So that's big O of N time for space. Well, for the space complexity, well, 
you know, we create these three pointers. It doesn't matter how long this list is, right? With respect to the length of the list, we always just create these three pointers. We create a couple of variables to keep track of stuff. Uh, we keep, we uh, update those variables um, as appropriate, but we don't create more variables. We don't create any variables that's uh, growing tangentially or, or with respect to the length of the list. Um, and then we just return two things and, you know, we compare two things. So we create a constant number of variables. We update those constant variables. We don't create more. That's constant time, uh, constant space. Sorry. And with that said, that's the uh, gist of this problem. I hope everybody has a beautiful day. Peace out.